Hi guys, welcome to the show. My name is Seb Ostrovich, aka the voice of the people, and this is the Weightlifting House Podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House. I was going to say a news show then. I'm so out of touch with what I was going to do. Of the Weightlifting House podcast <laughs> with your host, Sir Vostrovich, the voice of the people. Joined, of course, by the people's coach, Glenn Pendley. And joined this week by a special guest, Joshua Gibson from the Philosophical Weightlifting Podcast. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm doing very good. I think Josh is probably a little sore. Yeah, I'm very tired. Yeah. Uh, doing pretty well, though. Yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed that I got the intro wrong. We've done 103 episodes, and I've never had to, I've never got it wrong. I've never you're had off, to restart an episode. You're I am, I'm just, I'm in a new place, I'm at your house, um, i got Josh sat here, he's got me all nervous. It's not my <laughs> house is the problem, All right. I, I, I think. <laughs> it's Josh's presence. Yes. Yeah, I do intimidate people. Josh yeah. screwed us up. Well, I've been whooping Josh's ass basically every session since I've been here. Yeah, um, you're very good at powers. <laughs> Everything else, not so much. Um, Yeah. That's fair. But Can't I'm going to beat him not so much. Yeah. No. Well, I, I outcleaned Josh. Can we just accept well, that? you did that. Well, you that was that. supposed to be a light day. What do you clean from the floor? I've cleaned 43. Yeah, exactly. So, Did you jerk uh, your, your clean? I cleaned 46. 46. It's time to move on from this segment of the show, Josh. <laughs> um, you need to get it's a, good that you guys are competitive with each other. You need to get a grip. You know? Yeah. Competitive with each other. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. You know, I, I do actually want to talk about, because I find this kind of interesting, uh, Glenn, why do you think it is? Because it, it is it is strange. I've never met anyone quite like this. That Josh can he can block snatch one twenty seven, he can full snatch one eighteen one twenty one twenty, yeah. and he can power snatch like ninety. On a good I, day, which that's is, roughly right. Yeah. Which is <laughs> roughly kind of crazy. I mean, like he he snatches significantly more than he power cleans. Right. Uh, I I don't get that as a as a lifter who. You know, I'm, I'm an efficient lifter, but I cannot get my head around snatching more than a power clean. Do you, have you it's, met guys like that? I have. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Bit Probably a good thing. Probably yeah. a good thing. I mean, with Josh, he's, his build and his strengths and weaknesses just make him not very good off the floor. Yeah. Actually, on both lifts. He's just a weak guy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, like I wouldn't call him weak, but he's not very good from the floor to the knee. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's the hardest part of lifter, and that's why he does so much more from the box. Yeah, that makes kind of sense. You know, Do Donnie you... was like that. I mean, he was just had anatomically, he just couldn't yeah. generate a lot of power on the floor. But I saw Donnie power clean 180, which is pretty well, pretty strong. But he was still like that. Yeah, you know? yeah he was yeah, still yeah. like that. I mean, he, did, he what, could 225 do. He could, could power box. clean, you know, like uh, much more off high block. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So he's that kind of guy. I find that with the clean, I, I'm good off blocks. I just kind of get under, but with a snatch. I did 110 once, but I hate it. Like, I really hate mm-hmm. not having a pull. Like, when we did those hang snatches, I mean, I, I PR'd, I got 112. But still, I just... the, I'm good the at more pull. No, I'm not. The more pull I have, the better I tend to right, be with everything. Right. Just getting some height on the bar. That makes sense yeah. to me, because that's how I am, and so it makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, the more time and distance I have to right. accelerate the bar, I, I don't know. I feel like the more time I have, the more of an opportunity I have to screw up. Whereas, like, if I just have a second pull, I can put a lot into it. I think that's yeah very true for a lot of people. It doesn't really matter if it's good or bad, because there's a lot of like, world champions that are great off blocks. Sure. Snatch much more, clean much more off blocks. Yeah. I mean, I Ilya, it, Ilya I sna- snatches a lot more. Yeah, I don't think it matters if you're good or bad. It just, that's the way your body's set up. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're good positions. at the full snatch and the full clean and jerk. That's what you're doing me. These so accessories matters, kind sure. of, you, you want to PR all the accessories, but you don't want to get too hung up on... You know, if you're if you're incredibly bad at something, I think bringing it up. They're only useful as much as they increase the lift from the floor, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And for snatch, especially, um, because the position off the floor is so extreme, because you're have a snatch grip. Mm -hmm. um, A lot of people, I think, a lot of people can do it much more volume at higher weights off the box. Yeah, and that just means that they're getting to catch that weight um, again and again. Or heavier weight than they can actually snatch. Yeah, and I think that's very, very useful because snatch is hard to catch. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. they're clean. It's not probably quite so useful, but for the snatch, that's the weak point that a lot of people have yeah. is that they're able to catch it. Yeah, and so I think for that reason, snatch off blocks 
are incredibly useful tool. Yeah. So if someone has a difficulty catching a clean, what would your recommendation be to help fix the problem if, if catching a snatch would just be doing more snatches at heavier weights? I think the same thing for cleans in a way. Yeah. Um, I think that catching a clean, if you can stand up with it fairly easily, mm-hmm. you're going to catch it. When you see people fail at catching a clean, usually it's people that are at the very, very mm-hmm. edge of what they can actually stand up with. Yeah. So it's incredibly hard for them to catch it. I mean, that's what me and Josh said. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'll get under a PR clean occasionally, but I, it's getting up with it is the issue. Right. Whereas you see Jordan, he'll, he'll, I mean, he, even his top clean, it looks when you watch him like he can get under it quick. Right. And that he can stand it yeah. up easy. It's just the fact that he's up at that 180, 400 pound range right. that is so in his head. Um, whereas, you know, I'd, I definitely agree that we struggle getting under, we struggle getting up, but... What about you Bob know. Durant? I mean, when he couldn't catch a clean in the proper position, he just, it's like he, it's nothing. He's strong. Yeah. He's very strong. Freakishly strong. Yeah. 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 And there's a, you know, the biggest advantage of being really strong like that is he can do more weights at the upper limit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very true. Like Bob's going to be able to catch a limit clean yeah. and actually catch it correctly and stand up with it mm-hmm. much more in one week, mm-hmm. much more times on a week yeah. than you guys can, either one of you. Yeah. Because once you do that once or twice, your uh, your bitter uh, your upper limit of what you can actually pull fast enough or catch su- successfully. Yeah. And so you're just not going to do that that often. Yeah. I was yeah. actually speaking to Travis Mash about this like a week ago, and he was talking about Nathan Damron, who's obviously incredibly strong. Right. And how Nathan said to him how it's annoying that people always say, "Oh, you're so good at the squat, you're so strong, why aren't your lifts up?" And he always thought it was just a benefit because he can train it. 90% right. so often. Yeah. He can make so many heavy attempts right. because it's not going to kill him like it is I, a weaker I, lifter. I totally agree with that. Yeah, it's definitely a beneficial thing. So at that point, it's just perfecting positioning? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It just becomes getting good at the snatch and clean jerk. Mm-hmm. But a, heavy, a, a big squat is so useful for, just what we're talking about, the amount of time you can, and reps you can get at a heavy weight. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just so useful for that. Yeah, yeah it's good. It doesn't take as much out of you. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're doing. I mean, I've never done this before. We're doing three sessions a day. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm finding. I mean, I've only been here now four days. Right. Um, I'm finding it less. I'm not as dead as I have been on the last two camps. Um, right. Just because we're we're so specific this camp. We're snatching right. and clean jerking. We're not doing three sets of ten to max on the hip extension. We're not right. doing crazy heavy banded pulls. Right. We're just snatch clean jerk. I mean, we're doing adding this extra session but the extra session I mean if all I have to do is go and hit 80% for a single right. yeah. I mean I, I couldn't do that every half hour and probably lift right. yeah. so it, it kind of feels to me like we're we're just perfecting the lifts more and more and more we did that yeah. one heavy snatch pull we're going to do that that again yeah. a that heavy snatch hard. clean pull on oh, no. Thursday um, the day before we max out heavy clean pull or snatch pull oh snatch, snatch pull. pull okay um but that is, I think that's something we're doing on a Pinley Wad now. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm kind of curious to see how that will work. Have people posted videos Some of people it? have. Yeah. And it, the, the I'm guessing they're not I, going heavy enough. The response <laughs> that I've had to almost everyone is put two more kilos in the bar. Yeah. 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 So my you question, know. is that an exercise to preserve strength as you do more snatches and more clean and jerks and less like uh, heavy deadlifts? Or is that something, like what, what's the purpose of that movement in the program? To perfect your pull, basically, okay. sure. Really. Because you're going to be pulling on. What, what about now? Everyone about the center on, on the pinlet bot is your hips in the same position as you do in a snatch. Yeah, that's yeah. what everyone does. Especially you see Seth. Yeah, yeah. Hips right <laughs> up. <It's> ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, knees back. Ridiculous. Hips up. And so, I think his shoulders only, are lower than his hips. Yeah. The up, only time yeah. it has a uh, <laughs> the only time it has a, a relevancy Sorry, is Seth. when you do it the same as you do a snatch. Yeah. And uh, if you do that, I think it's going to. Increase your lifts. If you're just getting a bar up however you want, that you might as well be deadlifting. It's different, yeah. Right. It's yeah. different. It's and just that, way more specific. And with the heavy single, I think it raises the stakes. You don't have three good reps before and right. then a couple to break down. Like that single should be perfect all the way up to a max. Yeah. And that's what we all should try to do all the time. Yeah. But no one does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, no one does. It's hard. Mentally, it's hard. Yeah. Mentally, it's hard to try to do six lifts perfectly. Yeah. You know. That's hard. Yeah. Um, but that one heavy single, hopefully most of us should be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And you know what? One of the things that people say all the time, it feels heavy off the floor. Yeah. It feels mm. heavy. That's one of the things that you hear constantly. Yeah. Because I was just having an email with someone to do the penalty wall, and they're yeah. saying, my problem is it feels so heavy off the floor. I'm yeah. Like, who cares? Right. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It's always going to feel heavy. It always will. It's yeah. the stronger you get. I mean, I'm guaranteed that it is always going to be heavy. feels heavy off the floor. Yes. And it did when he could do 200, and it did when he could do 160. Like it, right. just, it always is going to feel heavy off the floor at max weights. But what's nice is, because I've never really done heavy pulls until we've until like the last four months that we've been right. doing them, is that weights, they do feel lighter, a little bit lighter. But then I go up a few kilos, and they feel heavier again. But yeah. they're, they're at new weights. Right. It's not like it's the same thing over again. Like, I don't pull on 140 kilos in the clean anymore and think, can I get under it? Right. I know I'm going to get under it because right. I've cleaned it what feels like 50 times in the last month. Right. Yeah. It's just then, you know, I'm now going for 50. Right. And getting under that feels heavy. Right. Um, I can just about do and it. And someday that, feel, getting under 60 will feel heavy. Yeah. yeah. Eventually getting under 200 will feel heavy. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. So You know, speaking of 200... My highlight of the trip so far was Bo, yeah. mm-hmm. who is sat behind us somewhere. He's a chatterbox. You can't get a word in his ways when Bo's <laughs> no, around. No, you can't. But he, he, uh, he went for, he did 183 yeah. back squat plus jerk for a PR. Right. Behind the neck jerk. Then he jumped to 190 for just a behind the neck jerk. He basically made it, but like tripped over his feet and dropped it. So we just thought, screw it, go right. 200. He and he went he, 200. He said he got too much height on the bar. Yeah, he, he said it crashed. I think because he took the squat away, it was just suddenly yeah. like, Jesus, right. it went up. Um, <laughs> right. Had two shots at 200, and I mean, he just... He locked both of them out. Yeah. And the held second them. one, Yeah, the hell one. The second one, he actually started recovering. Yeah, he brought his front like he foot was in. Bring his front foot back, set him forth back yeah. foot, oh, and God. he kind of lost control of it. I mean, for a 85, I guess he weighs like 90 right now, but still... I mean, an 85 kilo lifter, that's... He's going to lift to 85, though. I mean, yeah, 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 he's, yeah. he's got a significant amount of muscle to gain before he is 94. Yeah. Um, if they end up with an 83 kilo weight class, yeah. that'd be good. You think 83? I guess for the next little while before he decides or to 90. go up. If there was a yeah. 90, I think he'd be a beast yeah. in the 90 kilo class, yeah. I loved watching that because it just shows you that those weights are actually a reality. I think right. sometimes watching them online... Yeah. You create like you you idolize the little lifters, and you think, "Wow, those are so out of reach." But seeing Bo put it on the bar, right? It's yeah. just you know maybe I can do that eventually. And especially seeing the day to day struggles that you don't see with lifters who post oh, yeah. two hundred on Instagram, like the fact that Bo is just like dying trying to power snatch one twenty today, right? And then you know it's just kind of nice to see that we are all the same and we all die from these things. But um, you know it's kind of real the whole up and down that we go through that you always talk about where especially when you're training three times a day, basically to max every lift, every session, you, the peaks and valleys are so extreme. They're not gradual. It's not like one session is... It's not like two days are good, two days are bad. It's like the morning is good and the evening's bad. Or the yeah. morning is bad and the evening... It's really weird how it just goes up and down. And it, I always underestimate, or most people do underestimate, and I think I do too sometimes, how much emotion plays a part. Mm-hmm. Because uh-huh. when you guys are like feeling like crap the, the evening, you th- I, I even think there's no way they're going to be able to do 9% or even 8% yeah. the yeah. next day. And people do. Yeah. There's always people that get into it, and there's always a competition between at least two or three people yeah. that spurs them on to heavier weights, yeah. and they don't want to lose. Yeah. You know, and that's what – it's so much emotion driven. You well, know? that's what me and Josh have had. Like, we knew before the camp that we were going right. to compete every session. And, I mean, even yesterday evening, you'd said – Hit a single at like eighty five percent, and we basically took Competed. three attempts each at a max clean. And right, um, ended up hitting the same weight, which is a bit annoying. But like, and even this morning, I mean, you're terrible at power snatches, but we just yeah. went back and forth constantly, just right. retaking the same weights just to see who could win. What you I know, do- I really wish that Jordan would get into that with either Bo or Bob. either Bo yeah. or, or yeah, I mean yeah. Bo I or Bob. He's just, I mean, he's asleep right now. I think yeah. he's really, I mean, he's been here now a week. Yeah. yeah, he's got to get. Like he's got to. Yeah, he's definitely got to get involved more yeah. in competing with the people because he could have done more last training session. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he kind of. I mean, gave two days up. ago he hang snatched thirty five, and got under forty two right. three times. Yeah. yeah. And then he cleaned one eighty for right. a five kilo PR, like just straight after. So, so he's, he feels bad. It's how I was yesterday. Like I felt horrific, and couldn't believe what I was getting under and stuff. Right. Up. Yeah. yeah. How much of that do you think is mental? That he can hit those weights, and then the next one, 
just it's all to mental. cut it off early. It's all mental. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's all mental. Yeah. He was just as capable of PRing today as he was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, he was, yeah. And no, he had no a doubt. better sleep as well last night. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I think it's this kind of training, you know, when you look at the kind of training where you're doing four sets of six in the squat and all these pulls, I think that is less mental. You just kind of do the work, you turn up, right. you have the percentage. But if you're, and if you're a lifter that, that likes that, I think you struggle in this kind of environment mm-hmm. right. where this is entirely self motivated. Yeah. Or, or motivated by the people competing with. I right. mean, you can, I mean, this happened this morning, if you only want to snatch 60 kilos, Dustin, <laughs> you can do that yeah. and, and, and leave. Or you can try and PR. Right. Yeah. And, and both are, ex- I mean, both happen. Only one is acceptable, but... But but either one of them feel equally hard. Right. Oh, God, yeah. If you walk into and you do put the warm-up weight on a bar and say, I'm not going to snatch any more than 60, and that's okay. Yeah. You're not going to snatch any more than 60. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. But if you think, I've got to snatch 100 to oh. be okay, you're going to snatch 100. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so much mental. It's, I, everyone always underestimates that. Yeah. I mean, Tommy Kono used to say if the world records would have been where they are now, mm-hmm. he would have lifted more. Yeah. And I used to say that's impossible because you can lift what you can lift. Mm-hmm. You know, but but actually, I but actually, it's probably more possible. There's some than truth you there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's some truth there. What I will say is, Glenn, you did a great job of preparing a lot of the Pinley Wad lifters for the camp right. with the shoots and ladders because right. I worked up to a daily max three times a week, yeah. and I, I was mostly self motivated. So coming into the camp right. and going to max isn't, you know, it's not as scary to touch ninety five percent, one hundred percent, one hundred five. Yeah. Um, so I think that was a great progression. I agree. Yeah. So what are we going to do this evening for the third session? I mean, we've got the second session soon, but that's probably going to be... That's going to be a little lighter. A little and then this lighter. evening we're going to go max. On both? A snatch and clean jerk. Okay. All right. I it's going to be a hard session. 120. Yeah. <laughs> got to get caffeinated. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Probably not right now. No. But well, we are. I mean, no. you've got... I mean, have you got enough coffee there, Glenn? <laughs> I've got enough. <laughs> I mean, you've got about a liter in front of you. Jesus. Probably. That's about enough. Yeah. I think when I first saw Glenn, the thing he said to me was, I drink coffee all day. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a one-time thing. Yeah. It's an all-day experience. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to live the coffee life. <laughs> but I'm really, really thinking that what we're doing right now with the rice and honey... Yeah. ...is spectacularly useful. Yeah. I mean, so for people who don't know, I'm sat, and so is Josh... We got a big old bowl of rice. We started off with what maple syrup, and then yes. you found some Tasmanian honey. Of you know, all things. yes. Um, Peter and uh, Ed. Ed gave me some Tasmanian. I actually gave him two different kinds. Yeah. Um, we opened one of them, and you guys have a big glob of it in your rice. Mm-hmm. So much. <laughs> exactly. Carb central. Are you going to eat that? Eat that rice? I am. I just, I just figured if we're doing the podcast, I don't want to be like. But Seb, you haven't been eating that. much lately. I, you say this. You don't all finish I am your meals. Is, No, I'm just slow. I finish everything. <laughs> I just take my time. There's no rush. Well, Bo eats about three I'm quick meals on the by platform. the time you eat one. And look at him. He's I tell you, Bo is eat. a good eater. Yeah, he is. He eats a lot. Well, he's fat. <laughs> he's thick. He's, not he's like fat. He's like the leanest guy I've ever met. He's a muscle hamster? Is that what they call him? Yeah. He's annoying. A muscle hamster. I yeah. hate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's good. I heard... I heard actually from Donnie. I, I don't know if he told you this story, Glenn. He said that Abijay of when you know before Cal Strength when they lived in that house, right? That he'd eaten as much as he could have, and then he looked over and Abijay was in the kitchen making a big bowl of rice, <laughs> squeezing honey into it, and he took it over to Donnie and sort of like Donnie said he couldn't eat it, and apparently Abijay sat there and spoon fed him on the couch. So I figured, you know, just to relive some of that environment, let's let's do the honey and rice thing. I'm not spoon feeding you. I would, I would like it if you didn't even try. No, I won't try. Yeah, I won't try. <laughs> yeah, that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be fine with me. One thing I have noticed is that during these training sessions or, or before and after, I just I want to eat as much food as possible. Right. Like, I don't want to leave anything on the table for that training. Right. Like, I don't want to say I didn't eat enough, sleep enough, recover enough. So it's not that you're so hungry that you need to eat everything. It's that you don't want to waste the opportunity. I know there is a positive correlation yeah, yeah. with food intake and for performance. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think if you're in that position and you don't intentionally eat enough like to be honest Josh I think it's ridiculous that you're saying that because you weigh 85 kilos you're like you told me you wanted to cut down you're lean as hell you, need, eat to, you need to eat yeah I need to eat more god damn it and uh definitely <laughs> rethinking my weight class after this camp do you think that's a good idea Glenn he said he's wanted to kind of stick around there but realistic I mean you're like you've got to be almost 6 foot if not 6 yeah. foot 
Yeah. He yeah. should be at least, I mean, get to 94. Well, he's got to gain, he's gotta gain and weight. And then quickly go up to 105. He's got to gain weight as yeah. quick as possible. Yeah. Um, if you keep your weight down, you're just hurting your results. I mean, right, yeah. it might do well for a year, but you're you're hurting your potential in the long run. Yeah, right. It's got to be a muscle. I mean, it makes muscle. it makes making PRs a whole lot easier if yeah. you're gaining weight at the same time. Well, at yeah. the start of the camp, I told everyone to they're writing in their little books. I bought everyone mm-hmm. um, their weight every morning, which yeah. they're supposed to be. Yeah, I think the normal people like you guys are doing it correctly, and there's some people like Jordan that aren't doing it. Probably not. Probably not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the reason is because if you go to a week camp where you're training two or three times a day mm-hmm. and gradually lose weight every day, you're not going to do as good um, and you're not going to get as many results from the camp. Yeah. So uh, the goal is for you to gain weight, not gain 30 pounds probably, mm-hmm. but at least make sure your weight is slowly increasing mm-hmm. at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, at least a little bit. At least gain a pound every couple of days. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not I mean, doing that, you're just not going to recover as well. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit on the podcast, but you now know this, I think. I decided for, like, the last month, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell anyone because I was embarrassed. I decided to go keto for a month, and I, I, I ate... I, but you would be pre- pleased. I ate, I mean, I ate two ribeyes a day for a month. Uh, bacon and eggs. I mean, I ate so much protein, it was absurd. And I lost some weight, um, and I even PR'd my cleans but gradually week by week I mean I went from I tripled 146 in the front squat and then I went for 150 I doubled it the week after I singled it and the final week I didn't even make it for one right and that was when I realized so since coming here I mean I'm, I'm sat here with a bowl of rice and syrup <laughs> yeah I've eaten so many carbohydrates and I've gained about you're not keto right now no I mean I've gained nearly half a kilo a day since I've been here which is gonna put me back I mean I need to be 100 kilos again right. I got down to like 94 I think I'm 96 now so I, I've just got to pick it back up so why'd you decide to run that little experiment um i just heavily influenced by people talking about how good it was and right. I, I heard so many people even there's a guy here who he listens to the show his training partner is bob duran or right. at least bob trains with him and i spoke to him because he told me that he does it and he's been losing weight and getting way stronger. Right. And I just thought, well, what kind of heaven is this? <laughs> so yeah. I thought I would, if I get to just eat steak and vegetables, lose weight and get strong, I'll try it. And it's it's one of those things. Like I tried it. It's a fun experiment, but I um it's I don't think it's it's not ideal. You know, it's not. It's just not ideal. I don't think that kind of thing as an experiment is bad at all. And if you get stronger, yeah. great. Yeah. But yeah. most people won't. Yeah. You know, exactly. most people won't. I think I think the issue was. It was just hard to get enough calories. Right. I mean, I could pour olive oil on everything, which makes a huge difference. But really, I think just there is so many calories you can get out of steak and vegetables. Right. You know, unless you're eating like a kilo of meat every single meal, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know? And I hate to say this, I wouldn't think that would, would ever happen, but you do get hard to eat meat. Mm-hmm. I did not yeah, but I guess one day I probably would have. You probably would yeah. have at yeah. some point. Some point. And I think that's why it's good to mix it up. Glenn, you've been you've been making a lot of eggs, and yes. that's something I actually never eat at home. What? So I, no, I don't. Uh, Jesus. But with the access we have to them, with just I don't eat the the, cartons in the fridge. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's just eat as many as you want. The good thing about here is that my chickens laid twenty one eggs yesterday, mm-hmm. so we have to eat a lot of eggs <laughs> yeah. to keep up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so we have eggs all the time, and they're free. Free. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's great food, you know, it's got good fat in it and mm-hmm. eggs are great. I mean, I've eaten between four and eight eggs for breakfast every day for the last year and a half since meeting you basically. Yep. Which I mean, is alarming when you think that that's closing in on maybe 2000 eggs. It's a lot of eggs. <laughs> I guess they've kind of helped. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I haven't PR'd a lot it's because I've been injured, but I'm right. PRing a lot now. So yeah, <laughs> it's the, all good. The first day you trained, you had a snatch PR. Yeah, that was nice. It's yeah. been, I mean, like, oh my god. Two years almost to the day, just... My training for the first two years of my weightlifting career was terrific. I mean, I I would PR by a kilo every couple of weeks, just consistently. Right. Then I, I ruined my back, got injured, and, and, and tried to come back too many times too stupidly, and it was just bad mistakes on my end. Like, there's no one to blame but myself for it. And then I gave myself the time to really rest and recover, and I, I've been training... With no injury now for five months, right? And finally got back up to it and hit it, and it was easy. And um, I'm you know, have everyone, one everyone goes through that time. Yeah. 
Some people don't for a long time after they start. Mm -hmm. But every single lifter before, somewhat time between the time they start and the time they actually get to their potential is going to go through a year or two where they get injured all the time. Yeah. Things just aren't going right. Yeah. And you're going to have to fight through that in order to get to your potential. And it teaches you a shitload about right. whether you like the sport or not. Yeah. I think if you've been training for eight years and then you get it, it's not so hard to keep going until right. you're better. But if you get that like I did within the first two years, right. and you have to have two years where you basically can't train properly, right. and you keep going, that kind of shows how much... I mean, it's no surprise that I love the sport, but it just it really does show... Um, how much you want to keep trading if you can keep going. Yep, if this stuff was easy, I want to do it. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, it's not, and they don't, so, (laughs) you know. Can we have that as a t-shirt? It's not, and they don't. If if training was easy, everyone would do it, and it's not, and they don't. That probably would be a good t-shirt, wouldn't it? (laughs) Probably would. Probably would. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. That would be good. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, It's, it's funny because, like, Ten minutes ago, before, or not ten minutes, half an hour ago before we started this podcast, I was asking people what they thought we should talk about, and Bree said injury. Yeah. And me and Josh were like, oh, that's stupid. We're not going to talk about that. And then organically, half an hour later, we started Came speaking about, about it. it. Yeah. Well done, Bree. Welcome. Thanks. I think the thing about injury, and this is kind of why I wanted to maybe stay away from the topic, mm. obviously we're talking about now, but it's so, uh, it's so context dependent. I mean, all right. injuries are different. Um, how you got the injury, how long you've had it, uh, how much it's impacting your performance, your training, all of that. So, mm-hmm. Seb, I know you you have a, a trap injury right now, or at least like a slight strain or something. Yeah, that's Definitely. the thing. Like, it's exactly what you're saying. As I wouldn't call it an injury. Yeah. Like my traps, if I pulled, I pulled something in my trap. It's really sore, but it's not an injury. Yeah. Like I can just train, and it will hurt, but. I don't think it's going to cause me or inflict further pain the more I do or further injury the more I do anything. Right. It's just one of those things where if you can be okay with the pain, you can train through it and in a week or two it'll go. So it's one of those things. It's like, I think knowing the difference between how we... F- I mean, most people, I imagine, if they felt how, say, Jordan feels now, they would think that they were injured, but really they're not. Right. You know, it's just when you max out... I mean, it's all contextual. A few times right. a day, it's all contextual. So, Glenn, really you can is. pretty much predict what's going to happen to an athlete when they start a high-frequency training program or a difficult training program, like how they're going to be introduced to it, when they break down, uh, how they're going to recover. Probably not as well as you think. Yeah. Because everyone is 100% different. Sure. Some people, when they first start, um, the odd thing is it doesn't depend on how they feel at all. You know, I've had athletes mm-hmm. go to... A very very high frequency, and they think they're dying. They think they're dying. Yeah, like literally dying. Yeah, you know. But and like yet they yet yet <laughs> they can you be able to put a little bit of weight on a bar, do it, complain and complain, complain, mm-hmm. bitch, bitch, bitch. Yeah, put a little more on a bar, do it, bitch even more, and that process repeats eight times until they get up to max. Mm-hmm. And each time. With 40 kilos, 50 kilos, 60 kilos, etc., I can't do a pound more or a mm-hmm. kilo more. I can't do it. I can't do it. Please, God, please, just do try one more. Try one more. Let's put on two two kilos and try it again. And they'll do it. And they'll make it good. I'll make it easily. And I'll say, I can no way I can do more. No way I can do more. Mm-hmm. You know, when I did my thesis, um, which I've talked about too much, I suppose. It's um, always interesting. We used to have guys that claimed they couldn't walk up the stairs. I can't do the blood draw today because I can't get up the stairs to where we do the blood draw. And <laughs> it was like, yes, you can. Put one foot in front of the other. Just try. <laughs> Just do one I can't step. do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. Try one step up the stairs. And they could do it. And they get pissed off and eventually go up a whole flight of stairs. And they say, okay, I'll do blood draw, but I'm, I'm not training today. I'm not training today. Mm-hmm. No way you can get me to train today. So I do a blood draw, and I say, we'll go back down and just try to lift the bar. We try to lift the bar, and you can't. You know, we'll say, okay, you mm-hmm. can't lift today. And then we do the whole process again. Yeah. Try to put 40 kilos on the bar. Just see if we can snatch it. You know, and you go all, go, uh, the process would repeat up until they got to a PR. Yeah. And it was kind of one of those things that no one thought they could do it. No one thought they could do it. But they did it, you know. 
And I think that we had a couple of advantages and disadvantages both over, like you guys, and that they were all, a lot of them were grad students. And so if they didn't do it, they were going to be kind of in trouble. You know, they had to do it because they were getting mm-hmm. paid by the university and mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And that's part of their job is to do the studies. Um, and so there was that that was good, but I had to say that we didn't have the camaraderie that you guys have. So they weren't as internally motiva- motivated um, as most of you guys are mm-hmm. uh, to actually lift big weights, yeah. you know, um, and that adds a lot. Yeah. I think it's incredibly important. Yeah. I mean, um, our atmosphere in this gym is, it's special. I mean, we have, it's funny. Everyone's taking the piss out of each other, but it's also, we really all want, we so much want people to PR. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's amazing how much I want other people to PR. Right. Not as much as I want to myself, but I think everyone's in that situation not. where they want, not. they want people to do something crazy. Because you want them to PR because you know that if Joshua PRs... Yeah, I have a more chance. you got a bigger chance to well. PR on yourself. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why everyone wants to, yeah. to PR. I mean, it's all selfish in the end. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter. I think it's like, I mean, you were saying about having to convince the guys to put five kilos on or ten kilos on. We have that in the... I don't feel like we need to convince ourselves so much. It's more, say this morning, I'm, I'm generally the better power snatcher of the two of us. So I'll hit 90 and just think probably he's going to feel tired and he's not even going to do 90. But then he'll do it and it's like, God damn it. So I do 95 <laughs> and he puts on 96 and I do 100 and it just kind of goes like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's more the, uh, it's like an ego thing kind of where I yeah. just, I, I can have five more seconds of suffering if it means that I get to... Be the winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's kind of funny. Didn't we do a podcast a while back where we talked about ego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was and a great one. ego is incredibly important in weightlifting. If you don't have a big ego, if that's not important to you, yeah. you're just not going to succeed at yeah. this sport. Yeah. I mean, you have to have an ego. You have to have a mm-hmm. something in you that says, I can't quit. I can't fail. I can't look bad in front of the guys, you know? Right. And I'm at a point, honestly, where I don't want to stop until, Glenn, you tell me, that's right. it. You, you cut me off because every kilo I can get off, I'll feel like I'm getting closer to reaching that, that end goal of being right. the best weightlifter that I can be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, you know, the funny thing is I'm not going to tell somebody to stop if there's, if it will improve the week at the camp, mm-hmm. you know? Right. So mm-hmm. sometimes if you try something three times, I can't do it. That's not going to have, recommend. it's not going to have a huge impact whether you make it or, or don't make it mm-hmm. on your performance um, overall at the camp. Right. Because it's kind of going to, you might make the kilo extra, you might not, mm-hmm. but the next day, you're going to have a worse training session. Right. And so, at some point, you kind of, kind of figure out what is worth it and what's not. Yeah. Right. And, you know, that, in general, is kind of the, the limit, you know? I mean, that's how we kind of decide the limit. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it feels like, or seems like, you can make another one without it affecting tomorrow's training, mm-hmm. by all means do it. Yeah. But if, like if Jordan had trying a third time and ain't going to happen, yeah. freaking stop, you know, yeah, because yeah. you're now past what's going to be helpful and you're going to harm tomorrow's training yeah. or next session's training. And it massively depends on the lift. I mean, if someone misses yeah. a single one RM snatch pull, don't do it again. All right. Yeah. But if, and then you work all the way down to the other end when it's a PR power snatch attempt. Right. If you're close, by all means, yeah, by all more means, because that's really not going to tie you out, right? But if it's a max clean or a max hand clean, maybe just a few attempts. And that's probably what I, where I liked to snatch way more in a clean jerk. Yeah, my like person is a lifter. Yeah, same. Eons more, ago, yeah, I love to snatch because you could go and max, fail, try it again, yeah. fail, come back the next day or next training session, yeah. try it again, just all the time. But on a clean jerk, you get a lot out of you, yeah. at least for me. Oh, you know, it's it a lot of beats you down. And so yeah. you have to really, really be more sparing with your attempts at max. Yeah, for sure. Um, think more, basically, and fail less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think um, something that I'm kind of... Something that I've noticed, at least this camp and the last one, not the first one, is that we're not squatting loads. And Josh asked me about that. And I might... So this is what my theory was, is that we're only here for a week and a half. Right. And in that period of time... It's not that easy to get weak, especially if you're maxing out heavy right. lifts every day. If we were here for a month, there'd probably be some level of structured squatting program yes. because you can lose strength in a month. Is that? Yes. Yeah. Pretty quick. Right? Yeah. I Although we so. are going to squat again. I um, would like to. It fills me because I'm not, I'm not a squatter. So if right. I can just go in and hit some squats, 
for me, it fills me with confidence. Um, for Jordan, it probably doesn't because he just thinks, why am I doing this? I'm strong enough. Right. It's going to fatigue me. Whereas I know for at least us two, it's, it's right. kind of nice to hit a heavy single. And we had, like we had a semi-heavy front squat. Yeah. And we'll do it tomorrow again. Tomorrow. Um, we did it yesterday. We'll do it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, but also, we're doing um, heavy pulls every other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And just so, a single, but real heavy. Yeah, extremely heavy. Yeah. And yeah. so you're, you're using your max strength in those muscles, mm-hmm. hips and legs. Yeah. Just not as often, yeah. Not as high volume, mm-hmm. but in a situation like a camp, there's only so much heavy, heavy, heavy squatting or pulling you can do. Yeah, there's only so much. Yeah, and your ability to snatch constantly is way more than your ability to squat or heavy pull constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why you, we snatch more in the camps. Mm-hmm. Same with the first camp that you went to. Yeah, um, the original Christmas camp. Yeah. We snatch way more than we clean and jerk. Oh, yeah. Because it's possible. Mm-hmm. It's, it's possible. So have you already learned something from this camp that you're going to implement in the next training camp that you hold? Uh, yeah, of course. I, every every camp is a little different yeah. because um, I feel like I'm still learning just like you guys. You want to figure I mean, something out? Yeah. I'm, 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 and the thing I think I take away from the last camp with the bands yeah. is that the bands are not magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bands are going to take a lot away from recovery. Yeah. But they're not snatch or clean mm-hmm. And if we did bands again, it would be much more sparingly. Yeah. Than, I, than the last I think camp. they were worth it. I, I agree, though. It's it's if you do them in too much volume or frequency, right. the fatigue that it bears you into isn't worth it for what you gain. If we did a, you know, I think if we did five singles. With bands at 100 percent plus bands, and we did that every other day. Maybe that could be okay, but we did it for the doubles and triples. We load it. We we the eccentric really slowly. Right. Twice a day, um, but it was interesting. I mean, I remember coming away from that and going back to England and doing some heavy pulls, um, and I couldn't believe how they felt. Right. They, 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 it made a difference once the fatigue kind of decayed. Well, I think it was helpful. It's just that was it helpful at that camp, you know? Yeah, I think probably not. But it's but then you know you learn and right. you know and now, yeah, you know. It's funny how pulling is so much more fatiguing than squatting. Yeah, because it really is. Yeah, it really is. Um, I'm not quite. I can't really explain why, but it is. Yeah, you know. Um, and we've never done. I've never done as much pulling in the camps or anywhere else mm-hmm. as you did squatting. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, my thesis work had no pulling in it. Yeah, just the lifts. Mm-hmm. And Did I'm not still, have any squats. We had squats, yes, okay, but yeah. no pulling. Yeah, and so pulling does have a different effect than the lifts and the squatting. Yeah, and I I don't think I really know quite yet, um, or really understand quite quite yet, um, exactly how heavy pulls affect a lifter. Mm. You know, um, I don't really understand that completely quite yet as in in a beneficial way as, or just no like like how much of, how how to use them correctly basically is what it's correct volume about. and kind of intensity, yeah, yeah. Uh, because squatting like i the think best bang for yeah. the buck kind of thing i mean if you do too few pulls or too light pulls right i always think they're completely can you not burp jordan we're recording a podcast jesus sorry um <laughs> um if you're doing like i mean i remember when i did a few programs early on in my career it was like 85% for yeah. like four fours and I used to just think why am I doing this I did it but I just questioned it so heavily I would kind of share your reaction to that yeah I'm not sure why people do pulls at lighter yeah. weights because yeah. light weights don't make you stronger no exactly yeah. you know I, I never program poles that are below 100% and if people's response to that then is to say well it's for technique work you just say why wouldn't you just do snatch the it's, right. it's yeah. 10 pulls perfectly Compared to one perfect, well, may, I don't know exactly what the number would be, but I just figure like it might as well be better to just snatch. And then on the other end, doing five by five at one hundred twenty percent several times a week is again probably too much. And and finding that balance, you're saying you don't know exactly where it is, but there has to be a sweet spot with every single exercise. I'm sure there is. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm not sure if that's actually that you can get to the point where you know what that is for everyone, mm-hmm. right. but yet hit it closely so that it's at least in the, in the vicinity. Yeah. you know, in the ballpark. Yeah. Um, I've always felt that pulls were not near as beneficial as the lifts. Yeah. Because most people fail on the snatch 
in with the technical aspect of it and catching it, mm. they don't fill the pole. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, and so I just don't think the poles are near as effective at making you snatch more as a lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the run reason that I've kind of changed my views in the last five, six years, maybe eight years, I don't know, on deadlifts and poles is because it's kind of a philosophical thing, but it's kind of like you kind of figure out that American lifters um, who are, as nearly as you can tell, without drugs, Yeah. Um, we have a few people here and there that try to use anabolics yeah. and get caught, and they don't mm-hmm. compete anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, the fact is that the American lifters that are actually going to the worlds are pretty. You know, I think I'm pretty sure they're they're drug free. Yeah. You know because it's or they're we all know somebody at least that was on drugs for a while, uh-huh. got stronger. Now he's off again. Yeah. And his list has gone back to where he was before the drugs. Actually, yeah. below where he was before the drugs. Yeah. And so I feel like by the time you go off and take the two years. Um, that you have to be off, mm-hmm. um, be drug to tested clean, throughout yeah, those two yeah. years, you lose. Uh, you, you have lost what you gained. Yeah. And so it's kind of fair in that way. Yeah. And I think that be, for because we don't use anabolics, or can't use anabolics, um, strength is always the limiting factor for a clean lifter. Yeah. yeah. I, it's just, mm-hmm. strength is always the limiting factor for a clean lifter. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... If I ask both of you guys, can you think of one clean lifter where strength is not the limiting factor? I can, only think of, I can think of one where I think you would probably agree. I think strength would continue to help this lifter, but it's not necessarily the limiting factor. Right. It would be Kendrick Farris. Could be. Pretty Could be. much world class in strength. Um, yes. And, I think I mean, you're, you're, you're right. He would be probably the one I could think of too. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm hungry, man. Just, just eat yeah. some eggs. Yeah, eat some damn eggs. <laughs> Pick a different. You having sugary cereal? I'm hungry and I'm tired. It's raisin bread. Yeah, that doesn't make it okay. Do you want to say hello to everyone, Jordan? You Jordan, know, Jordan's waddling. Over we've right had, now. we've had hello, this, everyone. This camp, we've had, we had the good food. This camp. Yeah, yeah, we had. Oh, yeah. I made bolognese. I didn't have any because I wasn't here. Yeah, He's gonna make it yeah. again. Yeah, we'll have that again. I'm gonna make it again. I bought our biting ingredients. We had jambalaya. Yeah. And we had Bob's casserole. something uh, casserole. Gaines, Bob's Gaines casserole. Gaines casserole. Yeah. We've had stew. Which sauce. I was guaranteed <laughs> that people would wake up next morning totally recovered. Yeah. That, that was, was not true. False advertising. No. That was false advertising. Oh, He's here. Oh yeah. Well, he PR. He PR. He's a freak. Wait, did Bo PR? Power snatch. No, he didn't. He got 115 and missed 121. Oh. Bo, did you PR in Power Snatch? No. Yeah, he <laughs> bought PR. So he was false advertising. Yeah, false advertising. We're going to have bolognese tomorrow. Yeah. And then I believe Mom has contracted to make chicken noodle soup again. Yeah. Did you get that? Did I get it? Chicken noodle no, soup? No, it was gone. The, it was gone the first day we got here, yeah. So oh, that was right. good, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It was good. So we're going to have chicken noodle soup again. Um... Bolognese again. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, we've had all that good food this camp. Yeah. We had all that good food. Mm-hmm. And yet, with all that good food, Jordan is eating freaking cereal. Which I think is just bad. No one called me a righteous man. You're a bad person. <laughs> You're a bad person. Yeah. Yeah, we did, um, we've done cryotherapy a few times now. I've never done it before. Really? Do you think uh, I helped? Would, on, um, yes. Well, Jordan says yes. I know a bunch of the guys here have done it a lot, and they like it. It helps because you think it helps. Yeah, yeah. I, I like. I've really enjoyed it, and I even said to them again today, "Can I do another?" Like, right. can, I, I did it, came out. Then I said, "Can I go again?" And they said no. But I liked it. I mean, they it, said no. They said no. They said you, you have to come back another time. You Why? can't go straight. I don't know. Maybe it's a dangerous shock thing to the body. But. I um I'd like to say on air that I handled it incredibly well and Jordan was crying um, and couldn't handle it. Why do I believe you? I it's totally so believe clearly you. true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and there's video proof. He's not lying. Yeah, there is. Yeah, Jordan was kind of crying and whinging and saying he's going to come out early. I think I just stood there stoically. Yeah. I was pretty pleased with myself. Yeah. Yeah, but, I've done it several times. This is how how nice of a person I am. Okay. 
I don't need a cryotherapy because I don't do anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yet, when I had athletes doing it, yeah. I went in with them. Okay. Really? Just experience it. Just so you could know. Just so I'd know what I felt. Yeah. You know, so I went in with them. Yeah. Um, just like every athlete I ever had that had a sauna before mm-hmm. a meet, mm-hmm. like to lose weight, I went in with them. Mm-hmm. They had a sauna for 30 minutes, down in Venezuela or somewhere. Mm-hmm. I would, with in my shorts and you know, regular clothes, Cargo go in with them, just so I could talk to them and keep them company while they sat in a freaking sauna. Yeah. I'm yeah. a good person because of that. You are a good yeah. person. I'm a great person. It's interesting. I remember Dr. Israel saying that he thinks that coaches should purposefully overtrain just to know how right. excruciating. Because he said that most people think they know and they've never actually right. done it. And to actually do something right. completely ridiculous for a few weeks, completely overtrain. Just yeah. so you can experience what maybe your athletes might right. experience, um, I think that's kind of an interesting philosophy. Just, just I totally agree with you. It, know, yeah. even if you're not as good as the lifters, you know, you I don't 100% have to agree with it. 100 kilos, but no. just train hard for a while to the point where you're doing too much, yeah. right. and your body breaks, and you get ill, and you get the flu, and you can't right. sleep, and everything hurts. Yeah. You know, I, I totally agree with good. that. Yeah. And if you can handle it, you can help other people handle it. Yeah. yeah. And and also you just have empathy for what the lifters are going right. through. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just. And I've I felt that way, for you know, last like many many years. Yeah. And I thought I think that it's the fact that I actually try to be an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, that has to help. Wasn't a great athlete, but I tried to do it. Yeah. I, I had the goals. Mm-hmm. I did the work. Didn't didn't wasn't good enough, but yet I did the work. Yeah. Um, really tried my ass off to be as good as I could. Yeah. That has helped me so much as a coach because I, you know, even it's the fact that you're lifted when you say you can do one more, you can try yeah. again, you know, they know what you're, you know, they know you know what you're saying. They know yeah. you know the feeling they're having. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that helps as a coach, I think. Yeah. I mean, I have a, there's a guy who I know from back home who he's, he's not a great weightlifter. He snatches like 60 kilos, but he's trying to coach. And I've often just thought that for an athlete, how hard it must be to trust and really invest in what he says mm-hmm. right. when uh, you don't have to be great, but you at least have to have trained enough to oh, yeah. lift something. Like if you only snatch 60 kilos, I just don't believe that you could have ever tried hard right. for more than a right. month. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not quite enough. Right. Uh, you don't have to be talented, but just not 60. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> anything but 60. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a day one. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Being the choir here. Yeah. I agree with you. You know, whilst sure. um, whilst we've got Josh here and we've got him trapped, can we just laugh at how badly he's going to be in pain when he tries to beat my 2K row at the weekend? <laughs> you know, that's going to be worth the price of the camp. Well, yeah. we'll film it. We'll Cause, put it up. Yeah, we've got to film that. Um, we got to film that. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember having a similar experience. Um, well, I was kind of the opposite end of that, but... but uh, What was his name? Um, I had a lifter. I had a lifter a while back. They had a girlfriend that was a pretty good athlete. She swore that she was going to kick my ass on a 2K. Mm. And I was like, no, I don't think you are. <laughs> you know, and she's, well, she's like 23 and young and I'm old and everything like that. And she's going to beat me and, you know, whatever. And she was, you know, a decent athlete. And I said, but I say you're not. And it's going to be funny when you try and fail. So we had a big a thing set up. Mm-hmm. To uh, have a contest, so we came in Saturday morning. Yeah, after training, myself got a one rower, yeah. and she got another. Yeah, and we rode side by side. Mm. And seeing her get ahead of me mm. in the first five hundred, yeah, I say ahead until about a thousand, hmm. and actually demolishing her, yeah. in the second thousand, yeah, to where she was. I mean, I got off the rower and was laughing at her. <laughs> you know, I was I, had, I was recovered. You're great. Breathing, breathing recovered. <laughs> Um, saying you idiot. Yeah. Why you thought you could do that in that time? Yeah. Is t- stupid. And she she didn't know, didn't know how to pace. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it was just she went out way too fast. Yeah. And it ended up being kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, based on that, how badly you're going to be hurting. Well, I'm at a point where if I said I'm going to do it, I can't let any negative thoughts creep in. So I I'm just you. going to exude confidence and convince myself that I'm fully capable. I thought so. Seb, yeah. be prepared. 
for the whooping of your lifetime. It's going to be hilarious. I'm going to, I'm going to give everything I've got. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to have to, and you still won't get close. You know, but... I mean, I rode 635. What, what, what you're going to have to do, you're though, die. is actually try to keep the pace. That's yeah, going to be, yeah. make it realistic. Yeah. So keep the same pace that he caught, kept when he rode his... 2K, yeah. his best 2K. You have to hold a 138 split. Yeah, try that pace for 500 meters, yeah. and you you'll can't. maybe do that. No. Maybe. Probably not, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah. And then try as hard as you can to hold it for the second 500 yeah. meters, yeah. and you won't do that. No. Not even close. <laughs> no. But I, if there's a, any slight possibility of doing that, if you do, yeah. well, you're going to die Yeah, yeah. after that. It's funny, because when I felt like this is like, maybe, I mean, this shows how much competitive atmosphere there is between us. I had never, like, this, the first time I'd ever met Josh. Right. Like, I'd spoken to him on Skype and stuff, but it was like one minute after saying hello and shaking his hand, and somehow he'd already decided and told me that he was going to be my 2K time. <laughs> I'd never even, I don't know how it got brought up, and I, I was amazed, because I kind of believed that maybe he was a freak athlete, so I was like, oh, wow, you can... But now said, you met him. He said to me, <laughs> yeah, he said to me, what's your time? And I said 6.35, and he went... Oh, I can beat that. And so I turned around at the car. I was like, really? I was like, I had no idea that you were such a good athlete. And he's like, oh, yeah, I can absolutely destroy that. And then it kind of dawned on me gradually over the next few days when people mentioned rowing that, in fact, he'd maybe never even rowed in his life. Had no idea what a 6.35 2K looked or felt like. Um, you know, I'll just say that I've been trying to break seven minutes flat yeah. in a 2K for years now. Yeah. And about a year and a half ago, I made it a, two years ago, maybe. I made it seven oh four. Yeah, you're now seven oh four point five. I've been trying to beat that since then, and I've gotten really close a couple times. And then I just get too, I just get too mentally caught up in it, cut yeah. burn out a little bit, and so I stop rowing every day, row every every other day. Yeah. And since I'm not really a gifted aerobic freak, if I don't row every day, maybe twice a day, mm-hmm. I don't improve, and so. This camp, I've been doing a 1K twice per day, every day, um, morning and evening. And I've improved, but I haven't gotten to improve. I haven't improved to the pace that I'll have to keep a, for a 2K yeah. to be seven minutes. No, at the end of the camp, are you going to try? I'm going to try a 1K. Okay. Are you going to do a 1K? Yeah. Oh, we're going to film that as well. Yeah, so I'm going to try a 1K at a 3.30 pace. I'd um, like to know, do you do any cardio? Okay, you're going to die. I think I guess. what would be fun would be to have you and Glenn start at the same time, watch yeah. Glenn beat you in the 1K. But we don't have and then two you. rowers. We don't have one We rower. do it at the gym, We can do though. it at the gym. No, yeah. you'd rather do it here? I would rather mine, do mine here. Okay. The reason is because this rower is... I, I know this rower and I've set up on this rower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would be so hard for me to actually get everything mm-hmm. on at the gym the Just same right. as this rower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we'll so do that. that. But... You guys can, you know, you could do a 2K. Well, he does a 2K, and he's right. laughing the whole time. So yeah. what could you row for a 2K right now? Right now? Yeah. Give us the time. I think, I'm I betting. Think I would just row a 6.59. I think I, I would just look at it and go, okay, I'm just going to hold under I, 145. Having had him be at the several camps already, I'm pretty sure that he could do beat seven minutes. I'm th- yeah. I think. I think yeah. he could. It, I w- it would hurt a lot. But it's one of those funny things, I mean, you kind of th- see this as weightlifting as well, is I remember my Roman coach said to me, because I wanted to hold, this is the first time I wanted to break seven minutes, so I said, okay, i got to hold 144.9 per 500. Right. And he said, there's not really, like, if you're doing that, and you, he said how, he was explaining how mental it was, and how there's going to be a point where I'm going to want to take it up to like a 145 point something. Right. And he said, honestly... There is no difference in how much pain you're going to feel right. between 144 100%. and 146. You think that there is, so you're going to slow down. There is right. zero. So right. just start quicker. It's not going to hurt less. You're just going to be done sooner. Well, I know that I've done on a 2K and a 1K yeah. many times where I started out at like a 140, like your, your yeah. pace, required pace, yeah. like a 145 pace. Yeah. And I always increase it. So both my best times on a 2K and a 1K mm-hmm. been where I started out um, like at a 142 pace yeah. mm-hmm. 43 pace then I in the middle of the row uh-huh. um, I kind of lose the pace a little bit yeah. in the last four or 500 meters I'm able to go faster until I'm at like 
145 again or yeah. 144 or 143 by the end. Yeah. And I think that's how I have to do five best well, It's times. interesting that's what you say because that's actually what we were taught. I can't remember exactly what it was, but we've got it broken up into four 500-meter blocks, right. section A, B, C, and D. And A would be quite quick. B would be, again, slower. Right. So you were almost – you weren't – you know, the, the, the second 500 meters was actually the slowest you would right. do. Then when you got into the final 1K, you'd speed up to the first block. Right. And on the final one, you'd exceed it. You and that's crazy. when you drop the pace. Right. I mean, it's, it's very hard to do that. It's like when Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. Right. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels. Like, you have a plan until you start running <laughs> sub-7 right. and you realize that you just got to hold on. Right. And just live through it. Rowing's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. So it's bl- horrendous. Glenn, bad. why'd you choose rowing as your form of cardio? Because well, it's horrendous. Well, the reason because... Yeah, because, because it's hard. Because it's tough, yeah. No, I... I, when I had a stroke, um, I lost a lot of eyesight and also a lot of my sense of balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think some of that's just because of the eyesight. Some of it might have to do something else. I'm not sure. But I'm sure you guys have seen me, like, sewing a little bit here and there. If I had to walk somewhere that's not sure footing, mm-hmm. my sense of balance is really bad. And so because of that, even though I've gotten to the point where I can do a deadlift or a squat, even if it's not super heavy, um, and I squatted like 200 pounds for 20 or something like that. Um, so it's not, I can't just squat light, so I go as hard as I can, but I really can't compete in lifting anymore because I just can't balance. I mean, especially on a snatch clean I can't do it. Yeah. So because I'm mentally set up to have to compete, like I just can't not compete in, in something. DNA, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And so I would ran a little bit when I was younger because I was in wrestling and we have to run constantly in wrestling. Because of that, I actually did cross country for a year just to get in shape for wrestling. And so I know from doing that that I hate to run. Mm-hmm. And running makes me feel like crap. Same. And so it just makes you hurt. I think not you not weigh, hurt in a good way, but hurt in a bad way. Yeah. If you weigh 100 kilos or more, right. it's and so just when I, not for you. Yeah, when I got out of the stroke, going with the stroke, was not, I'm going to come for eight weeks, um, came back. Like I didn't want to walk again. You know, this was so hard to do everything. And so I, you know, I got up to jogging a half mile, you know, which is incredibly hard. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I'm not going to let this beat me, so I'm going to start doing 5Ks. So I would go twice a day in the morning before I went to work, and then again in the evening. And sometimes I get at lunch, and again in the evening. I did that until I could run a 5K, and I competed in a couple of 5Ks just to prove I could do it. Mm-hmm. But during that time when I was competing in 5Ks. I hurt. That was like the worst time ever because I hurt. I hurt. I hurt. I was just like, a, like you know, 250 pounds, um, 240 pounds. That's too heavy to run. And so I just yeah, always lose in pain. I mean, that's just not good on your knees. It's really not. But when so rowing I, yeah, is... Exactly. So I thought, you know, rowing I can do. Yeah. So I just kept up with rowing. Yeah. This is easier. I um, think you can actually push rowing yeah. more as well because it's full body. Oh, for sure. There's more, for sure. more pain. Yeah. For sure. Um I mean, I've said this before, but I, I've never yet been able to make weightlifting as bad as rowing ever was. No. I, I like I, it more, and, and I almost don't, because I've heard people saying, well, you're just not pushing hard enough in weightlifting. Yeah. It's just not true. You, you can't. It's different. It's yeah. different. It's it like, hurts in a I'm different sure, way. I'm sure if Bo was sat here, because he, he was a good wrestler, he'd probably say that wrestling was harder. Yeah. It's like, it's, a, it's different. It's all different. It's different. It's just, in terms of... Actual acute pain. Right. Um, rowing is worse. I can't think of anything that actually has no. that much just pain yeah. than rowing. It's. I mean, I think I said this. I can't remember if I said this recently on the podcast or not, or I might have just mentioned it to you. But it's one of the. I think it was a Canadian coach used to say that rowing is a pain contest. Right. And that's it. And I agree just, with that. It's I agree just with a that. pain contest, and whoever can handle the most pain is the better rower and right. deserves to be because they can handle the most pain. Right. That's why I think it's addictive to a certain type of person. Right. Um, but it's a crazy sport. Yeah, it is. It, it definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Glenn, we probably need to go and get second practice done. We probably Should we do. wrap this one up and then record again tomorrow? How long have we gone? We've done, I think, an hour exactly. 59 minutes, 22 seconds. I think it's probably time to quit then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I wonder Put more if- ahead. Yeah. Breeze, while you're walking past, is there any <laughs> questions you want to ask? Sort of whilst yet, because I know you listen to the podcast. Where's the bolognese going to be ready, man? Is that the question for the podcast? Yep, that is. We're going to make bolognese probably uh, this evening, and it'll be ready either 
for supper or tomorrow. Breeze, you had your chance and you blew it. Did you guys talk about Eric? Oh, we didn't mention Eric. Oh my can we God. mention that quickly? <laughs> we we can. To. Okay, guys, go <laughs> on to oh go on to the weightlifting he, he almost died. Instagram and you'll see the video of Eric who went for a one. I mean, he's not. I don't think he'd be upset to hear me say that he's not. He's not a gifted strength athlete. Right. Yeah. He can uh, move pretty well. Yeah. Though. He went for a 101 kilo back squat plus jerk. He made the back squat, went for the jerk, and the bar came down on his head, and he couldn't get out the way. So he was trapped between the bar and the ground as it went down. He smashed his head, cut it, blood, concussed, fucked up his neck. Yeah. Hospital. Glenn called me whilst I was having a nap and said, <laughs> so I'm at the hospital. Eric just flatlined. And I was like, oh my god. And then he started laughing like that and said, actually, I'm just joking. He's fine. Yeah. Um, but Well, yeah, we could take him to the hospital and they kind of ruled out any... Yeah. Permanent damage. I mean, Pray his neck was okay and everything. Yeah. And but he did have a spectacular fail. Yeah, spectacular fail. You know. You know, there is one more thing, Glenn, <laughs> that we have to talk about. Yes. We have to, Brandon. We have to yeah. talk about that. So yes. we mentioned this on the last one. Brandon hurt his ACL, snapped it, and he's got the. He saw the surgeon. In fact, he's seeing the surgeon right now. Right. Um, and he's gonna. Go, he has to get operation surgery, all that stuff, and it's gonna cost about two thousand dollars minimum, we imagine. Right. So Glenn and I thought we might as well try and raise some money for him because everyone lifting can kind of empathize and appreciate what he must be going through. So we've got a mock-up of a T-shirt made. It's a really nice top. Um, you can look at it on AmericanWeightlifting.com if you go on the accessories and apparel segment. And the plan is we're going to pre-order as much of them as we can, get all the money, send it to Brandon, make the t-shirt, send them out, and then Brandon can get operated on and return to snatching 140 like he used to do. Right. Yeah. And the, the injury was terrible because he that was the jerk he needed to qualify for nationals. Yeah. And he, he basically and he made, made it. it. Yeah. He made it. He was just recovering. And recovering movement. from the jerk, was locked out, was great. Yeah. On the recovery, his ACL went. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Talk about the worst time. That's you know, a bad holy injury. Cow. I mean, the yeah. fact that that can just happen just out of the blue is just right. its kind of terrifying. Um, first, Eric goes down, and then Brandon with the knee. I mean, Eric's one was as bad as it was. It was kind of funny looking back at it. Yeah. At the time, it was scary. I was nervous. Yeah, I was oh, actually yeah. very nervous. Um, I thought it was very telling how we were all so fatigued that despite seeing him destroy himself, nobody moved. Nobody yeah. stood up and walked over. We just kind of waited until he moved. He did a little thumbs up, and then we carried on trading. No one wasted any energy going over. Um, and he's had a good attitude busy, about it. He's had a good attitude about it. Yeah, I mean, he's wants to train and you know, all that, and so it's, yeah. it's that's good. That's good. Yeah. No one wants an injury. No, no, no especially something not. like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Josh, whilst you are on the show, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, so I actually have a podcast. Um, which called, we've both been on. Yeah, myself and both Glenn. Been on. Yeah. Yeah. Seb has been on a couple times. And it's called The Philosophical Weightlifting Podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. Um, and I, YouTube. Yeah, and yeah. YouTube. I'm uploading the episodes. We've had on a lot of great guests. Um, we have a couple episodes coming up with James Tatum, um, Chris Tabor, a PhD out of uh, East Tennessee State University. And I'm hoping to get Kristen Pope, Anthony Pomponio, yeah. just a stellar lineup. Yeah. So great um, lineup. Yeah, Seb, thanks for having me on. I really How's the appreciate Instagram? it. Uh, Instagram is Josh underscore P D P. So Josh underscore the letter P, letter D, letter P. Yeah, that's so. it. Glenn, we don't need to do that. They know yeah. what to do. They know what to do. At yeah. Glenn Penley, at Weightlifting House. Guys, thanks once again for tuning in, and we shall speak to you all in a few days. Awesome.